Today, we're going to talk about why DaVinci Resolve 16's new cut page means you should dump Premiere Pro right now. Okay, so most of the reasons why I think you should dump Premiere Pro and move over to DaVinci Resolve now are because of the cut page. So that's what we're going to be dealing with mostly today. Uh, for now, let's uh, take a look at a little bit of what we got going on with an edit. We'll drop in a couple of clips and then we'll go back to the cut page and I'll show you around, show you some of the different features and show you how you can save a ton of time in your first assembly edit. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, take a little look at what we got going on so far. Okay, so that's from a short film I put together a few years back called Bubba's Thumb. Anyway, so uh, let's add a couple clips uh, to the end of this. Um, the old fashioned way, uh, before the cut page, this is what I would normally have done. So let's drop in a shot of Bubba's thumb that was removed from his body. Okay, insert. Out point, and we'll drop that in. Okay, uh, let's find another clip. Yes, drop in this shot of our villain, Castellano. It's played by Rick Gomez. Let's drop that shot in. Um, here we go. But let's go in and, and tighten up exactly the what frame we wanted that to end on. Say we want it to end there instead, for whatever reason. Doesn't really matter, but let's say we did want that. Well, I zoomed in to get a little more accuracy here. Um, and then I realized, no, this is not where I want it. I want it a little further back. It's, it's just kind of hard to put the file back there now, right? Because it's, so what we would normally do is we would zoom out uh, so that we can see where we are in the edit. And I may want to put it in, let's say here, which I wouldn't, but let's say we do. drop it in there and I know there's easier ways of doing that I'm just showing kind of worst case scenario that went in okay I didn't like the way that transition there so I would have to zoom in change where it ends same problem I know there's clips to the right of this and I, I don't want to move one and then move the next move the next so I want to zoom out grab it all zoom back in okay anyway I kind of overdid it there but the point is there's a lot of zooming in and a lot of zooming out and this has been solved in the cut page so let's jump over to the cut page and I'm going to show you why that's different okay so over here we have our uh, cursor here and we can either have it locked or we can have it in free play so if we move it off locked, then see, it's free play like this. But there's a lot of advantages to having it locked down. So in this ruler area here, I can scroll back and forth. And I don't have to find this cursor. It's not going to roll off the page. Uh, and then we have to zoom out and zoom back in. In fact, the zooming in and out function is not even available. I'm, I'm hitting on my Mac keyboard here. Command minus, command plus, zooming in, zooming out is what I normally do. It doesn't even work on this page. That does work over here, but not on the cut page when the cursor's locked down like that, which is good because I don't need to go to the end here or here because I have the full timeline up above. See? So I can get to anywhere in the entire movie that I have cut um, by scrolling through the top timeline. We also have this bottom timeline that's always zoomed in. 
And why does that matter? Is because then I'm not zooming in and zooming out for every function. So you can imagine the amount of time you're saving not having to do that. It's huge. So, and the other thing about this, see this little white arrow that's pointing down? This knows that my cursor is closer to this entry point than any other. So it's saying that this is where it's going to use its smart inserting. So if I wanted to take a clip, say I want to get a close up of our Castellano figure here. That's a bad out of focus shot, but let's say we wanted it anyway. There we go. Okay, that little bit I kind of like. So I just want to insert that. Well, I don't have to come back down here, make sure I'm where I want to put it, and then hit the insert. Um, because we have the smart insert. As long as I'm in the vicinity, I can just click this and it dropped it right in there where it's supposed to be. So pretty cool, right? Uh, let me undo that um, and just pull the cursor back a little over here. See, now it changed where the endpoint was. So if we just pay attention to where that is, then we know where the smart insert's gonna happen. Or we can, we can tell exactly where we want it. The other thing is how the tools just kind of intuitively figure out what they're supposed to be at any given point, wherever you are, contextually, in the edit. So if I'm, if I'm on this here, it ought, first of all, it's giving me a little option here to slip edit this. See? And then I can see my, my in and out point of the clip. So we can really just line it up all on one screen. But without me going up and changing tools that I'm using, because as you see, like they're not just readily available here because they don't need to be. Depending where you are, it will give you that. So if I click on the middle uh, parts of this edit like this, I can drill right in to a per frame edit. See, I can pick my endpoint like that. You know, minus one frame, minus two frames, so on. So we have our pinpoint accuracy there. I can also grab from the middle and move the whole edit. Another cool thing is if my cursor is, say, further down here, and I find, like, say I'm playing back. Let's play it back here for a sec. And I say right there is where I want to cut it. So I don't have to do anything other than click over here and grab this and pull it over because it knows the right tool to use for that automatically. So if I wanted to, let's say, take the last clip, so I'll, I'll use my top timeline, and that's the thumb here, right? And I know that I want to put this as the very first clip. There's no zooming in, zooming out. Like I said, we just grab it, and I can pull it up into this timeline because they're interchangeable. You can start with the thumb and boom into the music. Right? So that's that's huge as well to be able to take something from here and I can put it here or I can put it to the end up here. All interchangeable. And I can take all of these and put them back where they're supposed to be like this. So I don't have to zoom in or out ever again. Uh, for my first assembly edit. Obviously, we're going to go into more detail at edits where you're doing a lot of the L and J cuts with your audio and everything. We would do that mostly in your edit uh, page as well. I mean, like we always did before and like you would have had to do in Premiere Pro. But anyway, you're just getting a huge advantage by having this first assembly edit tool to, to just put the entire movie together really quickly without all this zooming in and out and all these extra little tools that are contextually intuitive. Okay, so let's show you around a little bit. Uh, on the top right corner, you can bypass your color grades and your fusion effects. And that's huge if you've done a little bit of that work and you're coming back to do some editing, but now your editing's really slowing down because there's so much processing happening. So you can just turn that off temporarily. The default uh, project uh, resolution is here. You can go deeper into the project settings from there. It's the same button as the one on the bottom right. Okay, so here is a kind of a cool new feature as well. And this is called Source Tape. When you click on Source Tape, what it does is it treats all your footage that you're uh, in the particular folder you're in. And if you have all your footage in one photo, great. Uh, you can click on the, the Source Tape and it basically from the first file that you've recorded, through consecutively to the last file that you've recorded, 
they're all kind of put into a timeline or kind of like a timeline into one file. And you know that the stuff you did in the middle of the day is probably in the middle part of it. Stuff you did at the end of the day would be at the end of it. So it's kind of easy to go through all of your footage, <laughs> find what you want. Let's say, I want this thing because I know it's in the middle. Let me just grab this in, out, in. out drag it in it's just like it's it's just so easy to be using this and finding all your footage you don't have to go through every little clip at least it's a way of editing and that's not going to be useful for all of your projects but definitely uh, in some cases it's going to be the right tool for the job okay let's just grab another piece of footage because I'm going to show you something here um, yeah, this one's already set up here for the clip that I want. So let's say I want just the video only. I make sure that I click on this, which is video only. And I oh, grab my clip here and drag that in. So of course I'm covering up the other clip, but what I want to do here is I want to shrink this down and I want to crop it over to the, to the left here kind of the stylized shot that I want. And easiest way to do this right here from this cut page, there's tools here, I click on here, and I can do a resize. It's a transform, but in essence, I am resizing it. But I can also crop that shot too. So let's say I wanted to crop this. So I wanted it because I wanted it to not be so wide. Um, so see how easy that is? Like it's a little more involved uh, doing it the old way through the edit page and even on Premiere Pro. So I found that pretty cool. Um, and there's other tools in here. Like you can, like when you've got audio on a file, that one didn't have audio on it. You can change audio levels. You can do things with audio there. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, this is the speedier clip. If you were to change this, you can watch your, you know, everything just drops off. Uh, stabilize, you can stabilize right here. Um, you don't have to go deep into the tool to find that. Dynamic zooms, uh, your composite, different options here. Anyway, there's a lot of other little features in here. I'm not gonna go into everything, but those are the key points I found that made such a difference to uh, speeding up my workflow, especially at the first assembly level. And then even coming back when you gotta do uh, extra little bits, like um, resizing frames and things like that, um, inserting things uh, in a smarter way. Um, like I said, when you're grabbing something from the end of the file and trying to put it in the front and, and so on, you may, may want to shift whole scenes around. And I, I find it would be a lot easier to do here in the cut page. Um, there's definitely some limits to the way uh, the tool works today. I mean, there is an issue with how it handles L and J cuts. In fact, it doesn't really. Uh, I found a workaround. I have another video about that if you check my channel. Um, but I think uh, overall, it's gonna be exciting to see where they take this next. It's already uh, quite an improvement and makes it worthwhile to committing to using uh, DaVinci Resolve for not only my color grading, which I've been doing for years, but now as my editing workflow as well. Great to have everything all in one place so I'm not using EDL or XML uh, files to import projects because those things never work out that great. Anyway, those are the reasons. Maybe I'm never gonna convince you to switch over from Premiere to DaVinci Resolve. Uh, and maybe it's a little bit of a clickbait title with you know this idea that you should dump Premiere. But I think this is one more reason uh, to really take a serious look at this tool for all of your editing and your color grading. Um, I was using it just for my smaller projects. I didn't trust it for my bigger projects as far as editing goes. Um, and now I find that, you know, the tools are there. For me, anyway, it's a win and I've definitely been converted. I was really late to jumping onto uh, DaVinci Resolve 16. I've been using 15. I was tied up in a bunch of projects, so I couldn't quite 
disconnect and uh, try to upgrade. That's the worst time to upgrade is when you're in the middle of stuff. So I wasn't going to do that. Anyway, I, I finally did uh, a year late uh, jump into this and, and I had no idea that number one, the cut page even existed, uh, let alone how powerful it was and how it really changed the game for me. Let me know in the comments if this is a win for you uh, or no way in hell. Let me know either way. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.